Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my live show today. Happy New Year. It is my first show of 2024. I actually took a break in December of 2023. So I haven't been here since November. I haven't seen you since November. You haven't seen me do a live show. So welcome back. Thank you for joining me today and Happy New Year. And I have a great show for you today about getting really clear about what you want in life and what how you can start right now in this new year and have a coach who's got all the answers for us. So I can't wait until we can get to that conversation. But before we do, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a personal trainer, a fitness instructor, and a health and nutrition coach. So what do I do? I help people in groups, individually, workshops, to find balance in their life. There are so many things that need to come into alignment that we need in order for us to live that life of joy, longevity with quality. I'm all about that. My Age Young book will come out in 2024, finally. And it's really important that we see that these things align And there's lots of self-help books out there and lots of little PDFs you can download. But sometimes you just need a coach or a person that can help you stay on track and give you all those little hacks and give me all those little things that you need to do one small step at a time so you can make long-lasting, sustainable changes for a healthy lifestyle. And I'm here to help you do that. So to reach me, you want to go to my website, which is Balanced Life by Debbie, spelled D-E-B-I dot com. And there you can navigate and right away you're going to see a pop up, which is a free three day detox. And we're not talking lemon water and uh, and teas of some, or juices. What we're talking about is food with a lip marketing list. It also has the recipes for three meals a day for three days that are gonna that these are very scientifically proven dishes that help you to get rid of the inflammation and kind of get a reset and a new start. And that's free, and all you have to do is just click on that pop-up, and it's going to download into your email. So give that a try, and then you'll see on my website what I'm all about, what I do, how I can work with you. I'd love to hear from you. I do a 50-minute free intake where we dig into your health history, your goals, and all the things that you want to look into for the rest of your life to give you on that road to health and happiness. So I implore you and invite you to do that. Also, I want to tell you that I am a live show that gets the conversation going with you in mind as well. So to become part of the conversation, you can call in here. The area code is 323. The number is 524-2599. Again, 323-524-2599. Now, if you're driving or if you're watching after the fact, um, or if you don't want to call in, but you still want to get become part of the conversation and make a comment or ask a question, I'm streaming live on my Facebook page, Balanced Life by Debbie, and my YouTube channel, Balanced Life by Debbie. And there in the comment section, you can ask questions, make comments, myself or my guest will get back to you as soon as we see them. And I usually look during the break. So uh, go ahead and become, get interactive with us if you could. All right, so like I said, we have a good show for you and we're gonna get on with the introductions. So it's a new year. 
And there is a lot of renewal out there for many of us, as I was saying at the top of the show. But a lot of us just don't know where to start. So if you're feeling stuck or stressed or unsure of your life's purpose, you've tried everything, but you're still searching for lasting happiness and clarity, are you addicted to the idea that I have to have more, more money, more fame, more love, but true happiness is still elusive? Well, the good news is we can break free from negativity, doubt, and fear. Enter my guest today, Kevin Roth. Kevin is a renowned dulcimer artist, singer, author, and songwriter. He has recorded 65 albums, won numerous awards, and sang the theme to the hit PBS TV show, Shining Time Station. His life was transformed in 2015 when he was told he had stage 3 melanoma and only a couple of years to live. He had a choice. He could get busy living or accept dying. And somehow, despite an amazing music career, Kevin has always found it difficult to simply be happy. He had a wake-up call, and he decided to do something about it. He envisioned a new, fun, and fun, uh, fun, fulfilling life and set about making the necessary changes. He is now a life-by-design coach, helping his clients break free from negativity, doubt, and fear. Kevin's life-altering experience woke him up. Kevin teaches people there is hope and a path to more authentic and a joyful life. He believes when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I love that. Love that phrase. When you feel happy, healthy, peaceful, you know your purpose, and it's priceless. So will you please welcome to my show, my guest, Kevin Roth. Hello, Kevin. Welcome. There's our audience. They're here somewhere. Um, (laughs) They're hidden. We hide them from you, but they really do exist. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm fine. Thank you. I'm to be the first guest for you for the year. You are. You're my first guest. And... I actually displaced you. I You were supposed to be a guest back in October, and you so graciously gave up your spot for somebody who couldn't do a, another live show on another day. So I really appreciate that. So here you are, first show of the new year. And I, I like that we're doing a show about transformation and um, getting clarity and, you know, your, with your purpose and uh, the things that will make you find happiness. And you're an expert in that, and we're going to break it all down in just a few minutes here. But I want to go way back and go to your background. No, you live in San Diego now, but I want to go back to the beginnings, uh, where you're born and how you were raised and how you got into music in the first place and then the dulcimer And then we'll go into, uh, you know, when life changed for you. So I want to hear your story. So I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I was musical. Um, I played the piano by ear, and around the age of 13, I saw a dulcimer, Mountain Dulcimer, played at a meditation gathering, and I just happened to show up at... uh, now, wait, friend. let's go back before you were 13. What was your schooling like? Did you have a music background? Did you play oh, no, an instrument? No, I was just, just musically gifted. Okay. I played by ear. Oh, all right. Yeah, so I, and I was dyslexic, so reading music, you know, ah. looked more like, as they say, fly shit on paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, everything was done by ear, and my musical background, I fell in love with Peter, Paul, and Mary, and mm. Joni Mitchell, so it was more folk Folks, than rock. yeah, folk singers. So, uh, I saw the dulcimer at 13, and I just knew that was my magic carpet ride. Um, I don't know how I knew, but I, I talk about, uh, when I was very young, um, having a vision of my life, um, in, in my book, Between the Notes, I saw three sections of my life and one well all of the sections included my music career so i just kind of knew i'd get a record deal playing the dulcimer and at 15 i did i signed with folkway records which is now part of smithsonian and did folk music for a decade and then got into children's uh, music and did that for a decade or two and then retired and then 
got back into a whole other um, venture with music. But that's sort of the scope of it. But when you were first playing the dulcimer, did you, is that something you do solo or do you play with other musicians? Is it in addition to uh, other instruments or how, when you first got into it, did you always know it was going to be, or did you want to be solo at it? I wanted to be solo. You did. Because it was always a canvas to paint on for me. And I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm more of a loner type than be a member of a band. And the dulcimer is a quiet instrument. So uh, these days you can electrify it, but back then, you you know, you really couldn't be heard over guitars and banjos and things like that. So it's a very um, meditative kind of sounding instrument. And is that what it's mostly used for, just for relaxation and meditation? What are some of the uses of the dulcimer? I'm just curious. So the dulcimer is an Appalachian folk instrument, and it was mostly made popular through Gene Ritchie, who lived in Kentucky, Viper, Kentucky, who came to Greenwich Village and introduced the dulcimer around. And then people like Richard Freenia and um, Judy Collins and other people started to play it. But it wasn't until the 70s and when the mountain dulcimer started to get, gain a lot of popularity, which is where I came along because my records were one of the handful of albums that you could actually find. Yeah. So, and because I played the piano and I wasn't familiar with the traditional dulcimer music, I sort of did my own thing and got the reputation of being an innovative dulcimer player because that's how I got a record deal because I was doing things on the dulcimer no one else was even thinking of because they were used to following uh, sort of the acorn from the tree, so to speak, playing traditional folk music the way it had been done in in the mountains and I just came at it from a whole nother shot. Yeah. And that, that, that gave you your uniqueness, like you said, to make you stand out, which was very clever on your part, you know? And well, it, I don't know. it was just kind of what I did. You know, I've always yeah. been extremely authentic. So, uh, and I've never followed the bouncing ball ever. I've always, you know, if you tell me to go right, I go left. Mm-hmm. That's just my nature. So, uh, but you know, fate is fate, and, and that's what really happened. Well, it's uh, worked for you, yeah. So, um, is the, when you're, do you compose music on the spot, or do you, since you don't write music, how do you get sixty-five albums and sixty-five different sort of songs or melodies out of it? I'm just curious, also. Well, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Write. I don't write music technically, like I don't uh, transcribe it for musical form. I know how to write music, but I do everything by ear so I can compose easily and I sing other people's songs as well as my own. So I'm always in the process of being a creative guy. I just don't put it down on staff paper or tablature. Okay. All right. So now I have a visual of how it all plays out and happens. We're going to have you play something for us um, uh, before the show ends. So moving forward and the transition, what happened in 2015 that changed your life? So my whole life, I was brought up to believe that if you had um, money and power, you would be happy. And because music was an easy ticket for me, because people liked what I did and I was able to find an audience around the world, that was my uh, you know road. So I wanted, as a young kid, I wanted a major record deal. I wanted a TV show. I wanted a publishing deal, all these things. I wanted to become a millionaire. So by the age of 34, I think it was, I had achieved all of it, but discovered that fame and fortune did not make you happy. Uh, didn't make me happy. Um, I was searching my entire life for something, but I didn't really know what it was. I describe it in my book as this sort of like shadow voice kind of calling to me but my really turning around and not seeing it and what it really was was it's the voice that everybody has it's a spiritual calling to come home wherever that home is for you Uh, but i thought that that meant uh, fame and fortune and because of the stress that managing um, a, a music career and uh, being your own manager and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Stress and inflammation are two of the leading things that cause illness. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, just out of the blue, 
I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma, um, which was very surprising because I'd never really been sick a day in my life. And they discovered that even though they removed the two spots where the melanoma was through, I, I think of it as minor surgery, they said there was a 70% chance it would come back within a year and then I would be dead within two. So I got that opinion from four different oncologists in Kansas City, Missouri, where I was living at the time. Oy. So that was a wake-up call. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, you know, all the albums, all the fame, all the money doesn't mean anything. Because uh, if I'm going to be dead, I'm going to be dead. Now, I, my gut, I tend to be pretty psychic that way. My gut said, you're not going to, you're going to have a long life. But the doctors said no. So I had to ask myself three questions. Uh, what mattered to me? Why does it matter? And what am I going to do about it? Mm, good questions. And first, yeah. And that's one of the questions I talk to my clients about all the time. And the answer was very clear, being music, being creative, and my dog Bosco, and I needed to get the hell out of Kansas, me and Dorothy. <laughs> yeah, here you so, go. So uh, why I did had... you decide, you, did, you, did you want to come to Sony, California? Was that the idea that coming to I, San Diego was? I, yeah, I'd lived in San Diego years prior. Oh, you did? Yeah, but decided to move back to the East Coast where my father had lived and the economy was tanking and the internet came along, which practically ruined the music business. So all the money I had, I started to lose. Oh, not fun. Yeah. Um, no. And, uh, and then I got involved in re investing in real estate and made all the money back. And then that tanked. So 2013 was a pretty rough year. I lost my dad. I, my nine year relationship with my partner ended a small little business. I started failed and I didn't know what I wanted to do because I was out of the music business at that point. So I went to Kansas where my sister lived and I decided I'd get a place and kind of figure out who I wanted to be when I grew up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, it's tough when I think change is almost inevitable, you know, you, and, and we sometimes don't see what's around the corner, but it's how we navigate what's around the corner that really matters to our wellness and our future and our success and ultimately our happiness, so. Yeah, I, I think I'm more inclined to say it's not navigating what's around the corner, it's what's navigating right now. Yeah, because, living for the moment you're talking yeah, about. Yep, yeah. Because yep. Uh, if you can figure out uh, what, what I call it retuning, mm -hmm. you know, in the morning I get up and I do a thing called dulcie meditation and I ask the question, what do I need to know? Or if something's bothering me, what is it that I need to know about that situation? And I gain clarity. And then um, I have certain tools that I teach and uh, certain techniques that I teach that I discovered on my own through trial and error that calm me down or sort of uh, smooth out the bumps in the road. So when I was in Kansas, I said, I want to come to San Diego and I want to find a, an apartment for $1,000 near the beach and live like a bohemian and everybody said there's no way you can do that in california it's too expensive you know i mean you live in california so you know oh, I but know i found everything well. i wanted I had a place by the beach and it was a thousand bucks and so i figured out a way to envision what i wanted and to make it happen and manifest it make it happen yep yeah. yep and it is it and all things are possible nothing's impossible unless you don't put it, one step, you know, taking, like you said, one day at a time, one step forward at a time and, uh, and envision it, create it, know that it's on its way and it can happen. I That's have, I, yeah. I, I was going to ask you, do you surf? Cause uh, are you a surfer? Is that why you wanted to get back to, uh, I w lived in San Diego for five years, but I lived on the beach for 25. So I'm very familiar with living on the beach. I married a surfer. I and no, I love surfers though. Okay, so I was just wondering because uh, your Facebook page has some. There's a lot of beach photos and some surfboard stuff, and even the dulcimer looks like a surfboard. If you <laughs> ask me, it's like yeah. a shape of a surfboard. 
So it shows me, Southern California girl, every you know, where my yeah. mind goes. Yeah. But that was just a little aside. I was just curious about that. Um, but yeah, it isn't easy to make those big decisions and hope everything is going to just turn out okay. You know, those are big moves that you made. But I guess the biggest transition for you was having a life-threatening disease that said that you could turn things around to your advantage. And, you know, I've always maintained that we have to take, we have to be very vigilant about our own health. And even if four doctors tell you the same thing, it doesn't mean it's the only way and it has to be the way. And functional medicine is a different approach than our standard Western medicine is. And so I like to go down every approach and every avenue and make the best possible decision for myself before I take a step forward. And it sounds like that's sort of what you did. I don't think you just left it to faith. I think you just knew that you could not be a statistic in this. Because the doctors, obviously, if they give you a 70% chance of it returning, they're, they're putting you in a statistical category. And you knew that you weren't in that category. True? Correct? Yeah, I didn't feel death upon me at that moment. No, I didn't think that was going to happen. I didn't know what was. But I was so fed up with my life and so fed up with... Uh, being in the music business, the business mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. And I was so exhausted emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually from constantly, constantly chasing the stock market and money and fame and the next tour. I was sick of Kevin Roth, the performer. I wanted out. I couldn't take him anymore. <laughs> I could take me, but... Uh, I just needed a, a spiritual kick in the ass. And that's what cancer was. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. It's a huge and, wake up um, call. It was a, you know, and I, I say this in my book. You hear people who've had cancer say it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And I used to say, yeah, well, like, that's just like woo woo Oprah bull. But it for me, absolutely. Mm -hmm. My life has never been happier. Good. Now, I've been cancer-free eight, nine, ten years or something like that. Yeah. Two thousand. It's almost nine years. Um, and I work with um, a naturopathic doctor as, as well to get down inflammation and, and things like that. Yeah, what kind of things did you do? Because this helps the audience a lot to know. Well, um, uh, I searched out a naturopathic uh, doctor here in San Diego and told her what my issues were and she put me on well she had me take a lot of blood tests mm -hmm. and she put me on an absorbent amount of <laughs> supplements which I don't like to swallow but um, one of my medical reports like improved like almost by a hundred percent and that took care of that problem and uh, so I'm about finished almost finished working with her because i've gotten to almost where i want to be yeah and you and now there's habitual stuff right that you're able to do on your own is that correct that yeah. you'll keep up yeah. on did she talk about um because gut health you know everything sort of stems from the gut so did she and that's the supplements obviously you needed to reprogram your gut and, and what you were missing you needed to put in and what was harming you, you needed to get out. So that's what supplements are usually about. But food plays a huge part because it's medicine. It can heal you or it can harm you. Did she talk to you about diet? Yeah, she wanted me to go all plant-based and no coffee and just green tea. And honestly, I can't do that. To mm -hmm. me, that's not living. Yeah, you got to so find So I cut balance. out some of the coffee. Um, I don't like green tea. I've tried, but I like other kinds of teas. So, uh, but I don't grab every pastry I see. Um, tonight I'm cooking a, a plant-based meal. I found someone on YouTube I really love who teaches that. And I do what I can. I'm not perfect. I don't look to be perfect. Um, but for such things, I just turned 66. I mean, I look and I feel really pretty great. 
Are you? Did you just turn sixty six? Did you say? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be sixty six in a few weeks. <laughs> no, it's nothing. It's easier than being sixty five because at sixty five, the world tells you that you're old. You start getting Medicare. So We're on Medicare. Medicare. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is a which is a, in a way a kind of a nice thing, um, and you know, uh, everything, including the health, is is the mind. And this is what I teach as, a, as a, a personal coach. Everything is the mind, the way you look at things and how you deal with things. And you need clarity. You need to know who you want to be. You need real clarity. Who am I? And what do I want out of my life? And then you need to eliminate the things, much like a diet, that don't serve you. I ha can and, agree more. I agree 100%. I want you to hold that because when we come back from break, I want to talk about the process and how you work with your clients, how you did it for yourself and now for your clients and how you do it. I want to talk about your Dulcie meditation and your book that just came out. So uh, we'll be right back after a message from one of my sponsors. Sara Olio de Oliva is an extra virgin olive oil company with a mission to provide high quality current season Italian oils to families. They have partnered with two centuries old family farms in the Tuscany region of Italy to grow, harvest, and bottle their amazing oils. Founded by a nutritionist who has a love of the land, sustainability, nutritious foods, and of course, Italy, they strive for a peak freshness and high nutritional content in every single bottle. All of their oils are current season, extra virgin olive oil, bringing you a true branch to bottle experience. And I know firsthand. So for an offer, go to www.cesiraoliodoliva.com and enter Balanced Life 10 for 10% off. I know you're going to love this healthy and delicious addition to just about any meal. All right, there we go. One of my sponsors. I can't recommend that olive oil enough. So it, it's on my uh, YouTube channel. Just click on, on right there. I use that olive oil. It's one of the ingredients to a healthy life. Of course, you know that, Kevin. Uh, we're just going to get back. I'm with my guest, Kevin Roth, and Kevin is a life by design coach. And we're going to talk about the method that he uses. I know that with your clients, you talk about your coaching is based on science, spirituality, and psychology. How does that work? How does that break down? So the reality is that this life is pretty much like a dream. It's not as real as you think. You take something like the mind, you could get the greatest brain surgeons in a room and dissect a brain and you can't physically find something called a mind. It doesn't exist. The same is true with the ego. If you say, well, you know, the problem is my ego wants me to do this or I have trouble with my ego. And I said, well, bring your ego to our next session. You can't find something called an ego. So what is it? So that's the big question that all these people have conferences all over the world about. It's consciousness. So what is consciousness? So some will call that God, uh, some will call that an energy. Whatever it is, you'll never know because it's undefinable, it doesn't have borders, it's sort of out there. Quantum physics has the same thing that spiritual texts like the Upanishads or things in, 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 in Buddhism say, that life is a dream. So once you figure that out and you understand that you're having an experience, you think, of this life being a dream and nothing is permanent and you, know, and you don't need to get upset by things because they don't matter. They don't matter. They don't matter. And people say, oh, what do you mean my life doesn't matter? So I'll give you an example. I had to be on the phone with Social Security. It was almost almost two hours with this woman asking me the same questions over and over uh, and all kinds of stuff. So the old Kevin would have gotten very impatient and, and thought, you know, this is crazy and why are they asking me about something I did in 1979 and, you know, all this stuff. 
But it doesn't matter because my goal in the dream was to get Social Security starting in a couple months for the rest of my life. That's all that matters. OK, mm -hmm. so I while I was on the phone with her, I took my dog for a walk. I stopped at my coffee shop. I got a cappuccino. I was scrolling through emails and I let her do her routine. So I didn't take any of the nonsense in the red tape that goes on in our lives every day uh, that seriously, which doesn't, which causes me less stress. Yes. I was going to just say that. Yeah, so I asked myself what matters. And for me, I simplify everything. Mm -hmm. Today, I eliminated one email account for good. So I'm down to one email. Oh, that's good. I don't have a car payment. I don't have credit card debt. I live very simply. Um, I don't hang out with negative people. Um, I choose my clients very well because they become family. Yes. Um, I love my dog to death. I make music. Bosco. I... Bo Wait, is Bosco? Uh, um, yeah. Let's see Bosco. Here's Bosco. This is the, this is the guy. It, this is oh, his... How old is Bosco? Look how cute he is. He turned 10. Okay. So, and is he a dachshund or is he a chihuahua? He's a miniature dachshund. He's a miniature dachshund. I am, I'm trying to rescue one. Um, oh, they're, find they're, a rescue, but it's hard to find the rescues. They only have breeders, really. And so, oh, I, don't know. I but I want to rescue. I had a Chawini for 17 years that just passed and, uh, about 11 months ago. And it was tough because oh, yeah, you know what that's gonna... like. And so, I have an affinity for dachshunds because she was, she mostly looked like a dachshund, but she had yeah. uh, part chihuahua in her. And, yeah. um, Anyway, and everyone loves him on Facebook. <laughs> he's yeah. like a the star. You, oh, on your Facebook page, he's the star. Yeah, yeah you use him. He's yeah, you, get, you know we all need. For me, at the moment, it's my three-year-old granddaughter. She is. I was telling Tony when I walked in. She's my drug of choice. She's my happy mm -hmm. place, and we all need to find that happy place, whatever it may yeah. be. Most usually, it's an animal or a person. In my case, at the moment, because I don't have an animal uh it is i look in my i just hear her voice and everything lights up you know i get all the serotonin good feels and my endorphins so i understand your connection with your dog i really do and i think that's important for everybody to find oops where did that come from the the, the oh. thunder clouds are uh, agreeing with you <laughs> well good i got it i got a good uh endorsement so um so it makes sense to simplify and to de-stress your life because stress is the number one cause i think you know i changed my career in my mid 50s because it was so stressful and that's how i've become a full-time health and nutrition coach i had the side hustle of uh fitness but that was only so i could get free gym membership and stay in shape but i also had the passion to stay healthy and to lead by example. And uh, I realized by going back to school, I could help so many other people. I could help people with their physical exercise. But the, like I said at the top of the show, there was there's so many other pieces to helping people from, you know, the spiritual end and all the little things that they need to know that they can change in their life to yeah. become peaceful and find that place that brings them happiness. You know, I needed to do that for myself like you did in order to be able to uh, do for others. So I think it's important that you love what you do and do what you love. And the okay. simpler you keep your life, the easier life is going to be. And it doesn't take much to be happy. It really doesn't. And that's what I teach my clients. So I'm, I've had clients who have lost their husbands of 40 years. Mm. Um, uh, I've helped clients get out of debt. Um, I've, I had a client who was physically disabled that basically found a whole new life um, within her, her uh, physical situation that she loves. So it's about doing what you love and being clear on it. And when the mind kicks in with problems, how to understand what the problems are and how to um, 
put them to the side and realize that it, it, in the end, they really don't matter. Most things are fixable. Health is pretty much fixable. Um, money is fixable. Whether you have it or you have too much of it or, or whatever the, the situation is. Um, when I started right before the cancer thing hit, not only did I have a death sentence, I was $80,000 in debt. Um, I was 35 pounds overweight. I was miserable. Uh, I turned all of that around. Mm -hmm. I saw, I envisioned the life I wanted. I envisioned the Kevin I wanted to be and said, I have nothing to lose. You know, I can try it on for two years. Doesn't work in two years. If the doctors are right, I'll be dead. What have I got to lose? And if it does, and that's what happened, you know, as I tried it out, I got rid of all the debt and I dropped weight and all that kind of stuff. And I lived and I didn't want to go back to the old way of living. Yeah. And then you... I started to make new music albums and came up with Dulcy Meditation uh, out of the, the pure joy of it. Isn't it funny when you start to, things start to turn around, other things, it's a snowball effect. Other things start to happen. You started to physically feel well, so you had more clarity, which you talk about all the time, on what your purpose was and what you want to do and how you could help others do it. And then the creative end started to blossom again as well because you took that whole stress factor out and started living yeah. the life the way you're meant to to be living it. And sometimes we have to bump into something really hard before we can turn it around and start living our purpose and the life that yeah. we were meant to live. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about, we have uh, roughly 10 minutes left. Let's talk about the process of uh, helping your clients and dulcy meditation, what it is, what your book's about. I want to get to all those things. So break it down for us. Well, um, if people go to my website, uh, there's a six minute video you can watch, which tells you my whole background and, and what I do and why I do it. And then there's testimonials from clients and they're all completely 100% honest. They're all, some of them are long. I would recommend anyone who's interested in knowing about how I work with clients and the effectiveness of it, um, to go read those testimonials because I put them up for a reason. Um, when I start working with the client, the first thing I ask them is what don't they want in their life anymore? Mm -hmm. Not what, do they want, what don't you want? Mm -hmm. And then, what do you want? And then we discuss where you're at, what changes we need to make. And I teach you an approach of how to look at things so that you give yourself the daily permission to be happy. And you give yourself the permission to say, you know what, I thought I wanted this, but I really don't because what I really wanted was this. And that's what I'm really good at. I'm, I'm very um, empathic and I can look into people. That's why I do everything in, on Zoom and, and say, well, you're saying one thing, but what I'm really hearing is this. And they go, oh, you're right. And then I work with clients a minimum of six months to a year. Uh, some of my clients have been with me several years and we develop different programs. Uh, some have learned to play the dulcimer, some have oh. never played the dulcimer, and others come to me as dulcimer players. So there's a variety of things that I do do. Um, I don't take every client. I'm, I'm not interested in being a rock star coach. Uh, I only work with a handful of clients a year because um, I want to be sure that all my time and attention is given uh, because I, I have a gift, like with music, of really helping to change lives. So what dulcy meditation is, is this is the dulcimer. This is one of them. It's a gorgeous instrument. Yeah. yeah. See, it looks like a surfboard. <laughs> it does. This is a, a, a baritone dulcimer. And it, you play it on your lap. So, but I'll just play it like this because you have to, I want you to see it. But dulcy meditation is just something playing very simple and slowly. You see how meditative that is? Just so relaxing. Like it just makes you want to close your eyes. and Because I meditate every day, and I'm a big yoga. Uh, I, I do hot yoga on a daily basis. So, And there's a meditative. We, we do it to music, and there's a meditative 
uh, aspect to that. And then sometimes they bring in live musicians for to yeah. play the guitar, but never the dulcimer. I mean, that's just beautiful. I actually yeah, yeah, saw yeah. Judy Collins in concert a few years ago, and mm-hmm. she played one or two songs. She she played the dulcimer. She she brought it up at, at one point. Is she on stage? Judy? Yes. Joni Mitchell or Judy? Judy. Judy Collins. Judy Collins. I know Judy Collins. I was surprised that she played the dolls. I know she has one. I pretty much remember she did. I think she did, as I well, recall. It wasn't yeah. Joni Mitchell. I did not have not seen her, but it it was Judy Collins. Well, I'll I'll tell you how dolls meditation works. So if someone is um, pardon me, my, my, I don't want to run out of juice here. If somebody um wants to learn how to uh to play a musical instrument the dulcimer is a really great one because it's super easy to play um sorry it just became unplugged there we go and what happens is if you imagine a baby in a crib and it's crying and you go up and you wind the toy or musical thing above the crib the baby starts to stop crying because its mind, its attention is going towards the music. That's what dulcimer meditation is. You put it on your lap so you physically feel the instrument. You, uh, I mean, a, a third grader can do dulcimer meditation on the dulcimer. And, and I, I sell dulcimers on my website and there's a whole thing about dulcimer meditation um, on there. I also create, by the way, a spoken word dulcimer meditations for people with music. But you're playing the dulcimer, you're listening to the music, which occupies the mind, and then you can go inside yourself and ask yourself, what do I need to know? So that's the first part of dulcimer meditation. The second part is when you come up with the answer, like I'm, I'm feeling very stressed today about whatever it is. Then the second part is to find clarity on what that is and the understanding of how to uh, stop the the craziness in your mind, which is the thing that I teach. So once you do it in the morning, it's like a musical instrument. If you play it during the day, or even if you don't play it during the day, it will go slightly out of tune. And we as human beings slightly go out of tune because we have a million things going through our mind. By doing dulcimer meditation or using the techniques that I teach to people who don't play the dulcimer, you are constantly retuning yourself so you're never that far out from your center. You're always in balance because it feels good. Mm-hmm. And people do things based on pleasure or pain. And just people just feel good when they do what I teach them. Uh, and they feel that their life is in order and they're clear. And uh, they get it and life is becomes funny. And um, it's, it's, it's an unusual perspective, but it works. I, it sounds like a total de-stressor because, yeah. you know, we have these limiting beliefs, our head, where our thoughts are constantly almost working against us. And we have to, the way you said that, this organizes them to, uh, to stop that banter, to stop that negativeness or that worry that they have over something. And you mm-hmm. actually literally have an instrument that can help you do that. That's so unique and makes so much sense to me. It really does. And if you don't play the dulcimer, but you want to have a musical experience, there's a certain uh, humming technique that I also develop that I use. Like I do a lot of hiking. So that's one of the things I do to decompress. And there's a certain kind of a hum thing that I do. It's all to occupy the mind. It's for the mind to stop talking, stop complaining, stop going crazy, and giving it something to play with. It's while reset. you're while you're saying to your inner voice what's going on, and you'll get the response right away. You know, you'll get the response right away. And that's um, a great practice because you know stress turns into stress and anxiety turn into adrenal fatigue and once your adrenals are shot then you're starting to go into you know you it, it's a whole hormonal imbalance which in turn is going to cause some kind of disease down the line yeah. autoimmune diseases cancers heart mm-hmm. disease whatever it may be you're creating chaos in your body 
So to have this sort of trigger that resets it to a positive way, your mind in a positive way, like you said, affects everything in your body. It makes so much sense. It's really very logical and simple concept, yeah, you, know, you know? And how I developed it and how I became a life coach is, as a friend says, you figured it out. My attitude was, I may not have long to live, so I don't want to spend time being aggravated over this mm -hmm. or that. Or I don't want to be worried about this or that. I mean, I don't have time for that stuff. I'd rather be sitting, having a margarita watching the surfers in San Diego. So as a friend of mine said, you know, you figured it out. And uh, I didn't die. I healed. And it's a whole lot more fun than getting aggravated doing what I do. <laughs> Absolutely. It makes so, so much sense. Um, let's see, in the time we have left, I want to hear how people can get a hold of you if they want to work with you. I also want to hear about your book, Between the Notes. What is that basically what we've been talking about? What yeah, does it contain? It, 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 it talks about my music career. It has uh, song lyrics in it, and there's also an accompanying CD you can listen to online with the music. Um, it has all the tools of what I teach. It talks a little bit about dulcet meditation. It's it's an introduction. Um, it's gotten it, to me inc incredibly seventeen or eighteen five star reviews, which you know it's not like two hundred and forty of them, but great reviews. Um, it's on Amazon, and uh, I have it. You, I've been reading it. It's really good. I oh, recommend get, it. Oh, I sent it. To yeah, you, you right? sent it. You sent it to me the first time around, and then you sent it to me again. So I have. Uh, I, I got it twice. Thank you very much. Yes, it's great. Uh -huh. And so we, they can get it on Amazon only or your website or your website will take them to Amazon yeah, where they, they can get it. Them yeah. to Amazon okay. Um, you can also order it, I think, through Barnes and Noble. You know, there's every way you can get it. Um, and my website is kevinroth.org. And there's just a form you fill out if you want to contact me and work with me. I'm, I'm one of the few coaches that doesn't offer things to get people to sign up. Um, like to for email lists. I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always told you should have a sales funnel and you could be a rock star coach and you could be selling this. I don't do any of that because it's just not my thing. It's people hear me on shows like yours. Uh, they resonate with what I say. They contact me. It's very straightforward. It's very old school. Mm -hmm. And I don't send out email. I don't do what I find annoying that I get in my email. Yeah, you don't want to do it back. You don't want it to be, I know, and me who, oh. but I am, I, I think, you know, the the reset that I give, the detox that I give out free on my website, I mean, I never really looked at it because I don't collect emails, so I don't look at it as that because I don't do any kind yeah, of emailing list. I don't have it. But well, I really am part. honest about getting that, you know, reset. And this does it because I tried and true. I created yeah, it and yeah. I, I, you know, it works. So what I, someone said what I should do is if you click on the website and you sign up is I should give you some free music. But my music is already free. I mean, basically. Yeah, it's right there and it's on YouTube so they can listen. It's on YouTube. It's we on We are uh, out of iTunes. time, yeah. Kevin. I want you to leave us with your final thought. Just a word, a phrase, any just final thought. And uh, we already talked about how everybody can get a hold of you. But what? give us some final words. Love, love, love yourself and have fun. Oh, Stop watching the news. ultimately, the most important thing, because that leads to your happiness. Kevin, I have to thank you for being my guest today. It was a pleasure to host you. I hope you, my audience, got some value out of what Kevin had to say today. And I really recommend that you go to his website, kevinroth.org, and listen to his dulcy uh, meditations and stuff that you can find on his YouTube channel and get his book because it's, it's very inspirational. And in the meantime, I want you to keep going out and finding those conversations that connect to a healthier you. And I will see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Get a little dose right here. We're going to play you off, Kevin. We're going to play you off. You got it, Tony? Oh, can you play us off? Will you play oh. us off?
I I can. I, I can thought you it. were. I thought you pulled it off of his. Okay, here we go. And keep going. I'm going to talk over you. Keep going out and finding those conversations that connect to a healthier you. There, we did it. All right, everybody. Bye. See you in two weeks. Thank you, Kevin. Keep playing.